everyone and a big, big Merry Christmas. It is Christmas Eve and what an exciting, sometimes stressful day. <laughs> um, as mums, we're busily trying to get everything sorted and making sure Christmas Day runs smoothly. But I'm here with a process video, a Christmas process video using beautiful products and I hope that at some stage today or in the next few days you get to enjoy this video, think about your creativity and hopefully you get some time with your feet up and have some time for you and just enjoy being creative, whether that be watch a video or get out your scrapbooking supplies. Um, so I have a 12 by 12 inch layout here for you today and it is using all the beautiful beautiful products from the oh what fun collection from pink fresh studio i just love this collection it is just all those colors that you could possibly dream of the pinks the blues the reds the greens we've got the holly we've got the christmas dance we've got the gingham we've got everything to make a truly a most wonderful Christmas collection to scrapbook and I thought with this layout I've got a beautiful photo there of my daughter uh, it's a four by six inch photo and when I took the photo it was up at a lovely lookout so I wanted to kind of capture the lookout as well as her beautiful face so I put her off center um, in the photo which gave me the for a scrapbooker it gives me this beautiful sort of white space to be able to layer it under some embellishments or just maybe put a title on it which you'll see me do here soon um, but it just gives me that that it's almost like it's a three by four inch photo which is half a six by four um, because it has that white space that's not occupying your mind occupying your eye it's not making you look at it there's not more people there it is just um, really drawing your eye still to Katie but still being able to be a larger size photo which is a normal six by four inch so I had pre gessoed um, this white card stock I sometimes when my mojo is running low I gesso card stock so I have a nice ready supply um, of gesso pre gesso cardstock and I'm using one of those here today and that gesso allows me to use that beautiful mixed media products and that so it doesn't soak through the page it sits on top and allows me to play with it I like to dry off between a lot of my layers and so you'll see the um, heat gun coming in and out um, and then you'll see those layers starting to build and get stronger and stronger and stronger. The first layer was really subtle, it was actually really kind of beautiful but it's, um, it's about the layering process here and drying off, layering, adding your colours, getting your depth, getting your shadows, those kinds of things. So here I am adding more water to reactivate blend get my colors going and see where see where it goes so yeah I'm using my photo as a guide because I had I knew in my mind where I wanted my layout to kind of go and Katie would be off center of the page so I knew so I'm just using my photo as a guide making sure that I've got and the photos not hiding all the mixed media work but still you know just being a subtle effect that runs sort of throughout the page there so I knew that I would have that gorgeous, gorgeous pink kind of gingham paper up the top. And so I'm just doing that mixed media in that space there, which will just add that nice transition from that heavy, heavy top with the pattern paper into the white background there. So you can see that kind of helps that transition there, that mixed media sort of flowing it in there. At that point, I realized there was a bit more bit of white space there. So I'm going to run that mixed media work across the page just to carry that theme through. Um, I was I really did not want that to be a sharp sharp edge between my pattern paper and my white cardstock there and as you see by me drying off it's getting that really beautiful depth you can see that character coming through those pools and the pigment sort of stretching out to the sides of where the water is and it gives me that beautiful sort of mystical magical effect there if that I, I hope all that makes sense if not ask any questions in the comments below so here I am I'm just adhering my um, pattern papers I'm just dressing the edges just to give it a bit of texture and also just sort of identify to really sort of make it stand out on its own 
I need a new edge distresser. That one I've had for years, but it's like when it's distressing, it's like really crumpling my paper <laughs> and my photos. But so if anyone knows where I can get or a brand of an edge distresser, please let me know in the comments because I need to pick up another one of those. Um, and here you go. So I'm just balancing it out, ruffling up my edges just to give that bit of texture. As you can see, it's helping um, distinguish between the two different elements. And as you can see, when I've put that fussy cut element there, which was a little painstaking, but look at it's worth the it was worth the work. Um, it's all sort of just come together in that in in just in those you know three or four little elements there. Um, as you can see that like that. Um, ornament um, cluster it looked absolutely stunning on the pattern page that it came with but as soon as I fussy cut them out and you'll see in a second I'm going to put foam adhesive behind each of the ornaments it really starts to jump off the page and that's what I really wanted to try and create a little bit of depth in my page sort of bring some elements to life adding different textures, those are the kinds of things that I'm thinking about when I'm putting my layouts together. What way can I add texture? What way can I sort of get a bit creative? What what way can I make this layout kind of come to life? Using foam tape, mixed media, distressing the edges, things along those lines really help just make the details come together in your layout. So if you haven't ha had a try at any of those things, Give it a go on a layout. Don't be frightened. It's only paper. If you're a bit nervous about blending colours, once again, just have a go. It's only paper. And just give it a go. And just try and get comfortable with something that you might not might not normally do. Um, and just know that the look that you're after might not happen on the first time. It might not happen on the second time. It might not even happen on the tenth time. But before you know it, you'll start to kind of get to know your product and see how it moves and and things along those lines and then it'll all start to come together. So if I could give you a holiday wish for all those people out there who have, haven't tried some of those techniques, that's my holiday wish for you, that you're able to find some time just to play. Oh my, I can't believe it's Christmas. What a year 2020 has been and I just... In some ways it's gone so slow but in other ways it's gone so fast and it's really hard to believe that I'm sitting here, it's December and I feel so blessed because I'm on just out of two weeks holiday and I, and I feel like I need that time to recharge but I'm just so grateful that I, that I can take that leave where other people have to work through but um, I'm looking forward to having some time to scrapbook and maybe make a few more videos for you. Um, especially using these beautiful Pink Fresh Studio products and to document my December and my Christmas day with my family. Um, so there you go. I've adhered that uh, photo on. I just did a single mount of um, just, it was just the backing cardstock from the cardstock sticker sheet that I used to mount my photo. It had a subtle little grey kind of star in it. And I thought that's really sweet. And then I just used an edge distressor around that. But as most of you know, if you like my videos, layering up behind my photo to really not let it get lost in the page is something that I do. So I've used a cardstock sticker there and I've cut it in half and I've um, distressed the edges. So I've got those pops of blue on those diagonal edges there, which just sort of bring that dimension and just sort of highlight draw your eye to the photo, um, which is the most important thing, especially when you've got a really heavy beautiful but really heavy um, embellishment cluster there. So I'm just playing around now with all the ephemera. Some stay, some go. Those Christmas lights are so cute. I can't wait to use them on something, but they didn't they didn't cut it. Um, and so I'm just playing around here. This is the part where I'm kind of trying to work out ways to add more dimension, more depth, bring in some spots where I could possibly do some journaling. Um, also to try and balance out that big heavy cluster on one side I want to put a, a cluster on the other side as well just to sort of balance the page out I don't want to sort of just be one side really heavy and the other side not have a bit of a feature so I'm going to build a little cluster there on the side and yeah actually I'm just having fun really flicking through all these gorgeous 
ephemera pieces from this collection. There's so many yummy things and um, documenting my project life, I can just see by even looking back at this video right now, how easy my project life page is going to come together with all those gorgeous embellishments. So using some foam squares, which can be a bugger to peel the backs off, um, I just wanted to bring in that extra element of dimension and um, and just this pop of green with this gorgeous leaf just to balance out that Christmas tree on that side and the green ornaments. You see me balancing that out. I've got the green tree, the green leaves, the green ornaments. I've got the blue ornaments and then I've added in the blue um, cardstock sticker like around my photo there and I've also added in the light blue joyful label there the reds and the pinks I've put in with pulled it in with the pattern paper and the mixed media and the yellows you'll see that I've added some yellow embellishments and a couple of yellow Christmas ephemera ornaments there to balance out the yellow and off screen right at the end I couldn't help myself which it's not done here but you'll see it in the photographs right at the end is I did use a splatter of some yellow I watered down the ink cubes like you saw me do with the Mac mixed media page and I put some splatters of this gorgeous yellow ink cube there as, around the page as well just to tie in that yellow as well so thinking about your colors thinking about not having it too heavy one color and forgetting about the other colors sort of trying to balance them out around the page and then it's sort of all the theme should all come together really well so yeah how what what do you think what about you think about me rambling away here and giving you some tips and tricks I hope they are helpful um and I hope if there's anything that you would like me to give tips and tricks on or ask me any questions please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the in the comments below and I'll um, check in with you guys um look at me adding more stickers more puffy stickers I love puffy stickers they're just gorgeous this collection is so fun if you want to know if you haven't heard of Pink Fresh Studio which if you're a scrapper I'm sure you have but if you haven't if by some chance you haven't I have um, linked all their details in the description below so go and check them out the one thing you may not have heard of is Pink Fresh Studio has a Facebook fan group where um, the design team is really active and we love to chat, we love to share projects, but we also, it's a place for you to share your projects as well and let us delight in in what you're creating with these beautiful products. I can't tell you how much inspiration I get out of that group, not only for scrapbooking, but for card making and different techniques. It just blows my mind, especially with the inks and the stamps and the blending. It's really, really beautiful. So here I am just adding a little bit of journaling, um, just talking about um, what my daughter is like in 2020, December 2020. Um, she's 11. She loves to dance. She loves to chat with her friends on social media. She's just a delight. And I just wanted to document a couple of those things about who my little girl is in 2020. And um, that will roll on over the years that she can pop back and delight in my little my thoughts there for her. So there's the layout. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. I hope you're surrounded by love and family, friends, and you're safe. If you can't be with family and friends, I hope that you can connect with them via telephone. And um, I hope your Christmas is wonderful and equally wonderful. I hope your New Year is as well. All right. Happy scrapping. Take care. Bye.